Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy. I am the archivist Sherry Heiberg, a proud member of the Lore team. For those who have not seen this show before, Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy is it's a journey that the lore creators take you on, going through each of the systems that we have lovingly and carefully created for this wonderful game, Star Citizen. We talk about the science, we talk about the lore behind it, and sometimes we even let you in on the process that we go through when creating stories for the system. Today, we are going to be visiting a system that some might think is a little small, and let's be honest, it is a little bit small, but it is big in history and it is big in science. This is the Gerzel system. Gerzel was discovered in, uh, let me check my notes, 2539, which is only nine years after the discovery of the palace system. Uh, for those of you who caught my last lore makers, I talked about the palace system and I talked about uh, how the completely slapdash, slipshod exploration efforts on behalf of the, the Gaia terraforming services just almost started an actual all-out war between Sheehan and humans during the first contact situation because Gaia planetary services neglected to notice that the system was in Sheehan control. They just started terraforming without doing any proper surveying. As hostages were taken. It was, it was just bad news. It was bad news all around. Uh, following that incident immediately, the UPE, as it was in that day, uh, established the Government Cartography Agency in order to consolidate the training of nav jumpers to include things like diplomacy and proper surveying techniques. Now, as we all know, when a government institutes a sweeping change, oftentimes it takes a while for things to catch on before people actually start following the rules. Uh, Gerzel is an example of someone who decided he didn't want to follow the rules, of course. Uh, it's a nav jumper who recently lost a leg in a ship explosion, which is, I think is pretty cool. His name is Dahunsil Kosako. After he survived this catastrophic blast in which he lost his ship, he recovered from losing his leg. He went down to the ship dealership and got himself something new. He decided that he was going to spend the rest of his life looking for jump points. He navigated to the Hadrian system. Let's see if we can find the jump point for that just by uh, kind of swirling around. We see the Horus, the Horus system right there. There it is, the Gerzel Hadrian jump point. Well, let me just take you through here. Woo! So he started in the Hadrian system, which has this giant star. And he spent a while just in the outskirts of the system, away from the sun, beyond the asteroid belt. It took him about three weeks to do this, which is a remarkably short period of time if you're looking for a jump point, because they're so difficult to find, so small, so uh, quiet on your radar. And instead of waiting for approval for anyone, he decided he would jump through. In this case, he did not kick off a hideous interspecies conflict. He discovered what is now, uh, what we know as the first, it's the first protoplanetary disk that humanity actually, you know, physically was able to visit after years of them being just observed from afar or considered a very viable theory. What it should have been the scientific discovery of the century, and it was for about three years. Kosako named the system after his aunt. He named it Odara. However, three years later, a Xi'an explorer, who was uh, <laughs> much like, well, let me just double check his name, much like Kosuko, came through, it was a Xi'an scout ship, and they discovered the system for themselves. And unfortunately for us, on the other side of that jump point, let me see if we can find it. We've got Gerzel, Horus, where is it? Here it is, the Rila system. Now, anyone familiar with the lore knows that the Rila system is a military system. The Xi'an typically will develop systems to serve just one purpose and one purpose alone. And Rila is, as I said, dedicated to military training, military maneuvers, 
ships, war games, anything you can think of. This is just like a giant, it's a giant base. It's headquarters for all kinds of different branches of the military. Not exactly the thing that we wanted connected to a system that we had discovered, considering it was the beginning of the Cold War with the Xi'an. Let's navigate back if we can find it. Sorry about making this, the camera go too crazy. I don't want to give anybody motion sickness. Zoom out, we can find it. There it is, really Gerzel. So, not quite as close to the sun as the one in the Gerzel system itself. So, in accordance with the tradition at the time, it was as it was declared a peri-line system, Gerzel was named Gerzel after, uh, let me just double check, the Berber deity of war, because all the peri-line systems were named after gods of war, palace, etc. And Sadly, Odara, the, the name Odara was never restored even after the dissolution of the Perry Line. It's still known as Gerzel today. Uh, it became one of the areas of the Cold War where a couple of skirmishes happened, dozens died, like sneak attacks occurred, ships would get caught in the dust and gas in the system, it would mess with their nav equipment and they would uh, crash or run into each other even in the vastness of space, which is a rare, is a rare event, but if you can't see where you're going, you're gonna run into something a lot of the time. So as I said, dozens died. Some of the attacks were blamed on uh, Tavaran refugees who were known to be camping in the area. Some of the attacks were blamed on uh, secret Xi'an military assassins, which you know, could have happened. And some of the attacks were, were blamed on secret cabals within the UPE, which eventually evolved to the UEE over the course of the next 200 years. But and it wasn't going to be until the dissolution of the Perry Line that this system became open to scientific study, which is as it should have been from the beginning. Now, to move on from this dark subject, I'd like to talk about the formation of protoplanetary disks, which I find to be one of the most interesting things possibly ever, because Protoplanetary disks form, well, actually we're gonna back up. We're gonna back all the way up to how a star is made because in order to understand how a protoplanetary disk forms, we have to understand how a star is formed. Uh, so stars and planets are thought to form out of nebulas. And a nebula, as you might know, is a giant cloud of gas and particles and dust that is always collapsing in on itself, or at least this particular type of nebula. Uh, due to the forces of gravity, the particles and the dust and particulates all come together eventually and start to form a kernel in the center of the nebula, which is, becomes the basis for the star. And once there is enough mass and heat, the kernel becomes a young star, and the mass and gravity created by the star start to compress the dust and gas around, around it as it's pulled into an orbit. So if you imagine taking a ball of pizza dough and spinning it until it becomes flat, you get a protoplanetary disk. Although in this case, instead of being made out of delicious dough, the system is made out of dust and gas, which I don't think would be a very good treat. But it's definitely good if you want to make a planet over the course of billions and billions of years. Now, <laughs> so as these particles orbit the sun, the new young sun, which in this case, Gerzel is a K-type star, orange, so it's a little cooler, a little smaller than our sun, and has the potential to be much older, which is super cool, I feel. The particles will clump together and they'll start to form like little planetesimals as they move in the same direction. And over time, the planetesimals will attract more dust and gas, and they'll become planets. And the orbits will start to clear out, and you'll get things like rocky planets, or uh, gas giants, or gas dwarfs, or uh, dwarf planets, or uh, asteroids that are left over, or even comets that form out of ice and dust and just get flung out into crazy orbits and cause people to believe that divine omens are approaching to influence uh, their world. 
it's thought that rocky planets form closer to the sun because the idea is that the sun in the system will suck up all the uh, gas that one might need to form the atmosphere of a gas giant. And it's thought that gas giants form in the outer reaches of the system where there's more gas for them to suck up into their atmosphere. Um, for those of you who know about hot Jupiters, which are uh, gas giants that orbit very close to their suns, it, the prevailing thought is that they form in the outer reaches of the solar system and are eventually pulled into the sun through some kind of gravitational means. Gerzel, uh, as far as we can tell so far, it hasn't started developing planets yet. We, all we have are these little particulates and planetesimals. There's still, still a lot of gas everywhere. But the idea of seeing this in, in real time, even though it'll take a very, very long time, is that we'll have a working model of what it is to form an actual solar system rather than having to base all of our, um, all of our knowledge of it on, uh, well, not conjecture, science, of course, but it's better to see it happen in real time because you never know how that's going to change prevailing modes of thought. What I think is absolutely astonishing about protoplanetary disks is that all the uh, matter in a solar system can be traced back to the beginnings of the star. So like your teeth, plants, uh, iron, the ocean, a cat, a dog, uh, we are all made out of the building blocks of stars. And we are also made out of the death throes of stars because some complex elements came shooting through our solar system from the remains of distant supernova exploding. And the Gerzel system, our hopes in, in, in including this in the game was that you would get the chance to sail around and explore a system that is, that kind of represents that incredible scientifically miraculous thing that is the protoplanetary disk, the creation of planets and the birth of stars. Um, with the star map, we, we tried our best with the technology we had at hand to create the feel of what a protoplanetary disk is. We used the asteroid belt uh, object. And I think we did a, I think we did a great job depend for uh, considering what we have. In the future, I would very much like to have more dust in the system. I would like to make it larger. It would be ideal if we could make things more uh, elliptical to represent how they would and how they would look in real life. Um, so that's that's another one. That's a potential star map update that I would like to see, and uh, we'll keep pushing for. All right. Well, thanks very much for your time for this edition of Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, it was wonderful telling you about all this as always, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. So if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.